Alright, so I am making this video, one, because I have not been keeping up with taking pictures and videos of the garden, and I kind of just want to document what's going on. Um, we just got our house and land this past year. We bought our first house, and we are starting our homestead journey we practiced you know container gardening in the past and now we actually have land before we didn't and so this is our first full-on garden um, I started with just a little patch in the winter and had a good winter garden um, this is the summer garden that I planted in spring which I was pregnant and had a newborn so it's kind of we've been seeing what works what doesn't learning and just kind of seeing what we can get away with you know keeping things simple we're all about working hard but making things as easy as possible with having little ones so i'm going to just take you guys along on a garden tour and just talk with you all about some of the issues that I'm having and just some information and hopefully it's helpful for you guys and a good document for me to have to have better success in the garden next year. Um, I am actually really happy with the success we have had in the garden this year. Um, over on one end here we have our zucchini and I grew black beauty zucchini here and we started kind of ripping it up and you can see it's getting sickly and this is actually from vine borers and if you look right down in there how it looks very gooey that would be a sign that you have vine borers and they actually eat the inside of the plant like they eat it inside out so you usually don't know until you have a problem which I'll show you guys what I'm testing out later on to see if it prevents vine borers or not because I have not heard of or been able to figure out quite yet anything to deal with vine borers they just you kind of get them and you deal with them now we are in a more southern area so that is a big reason why we have such struggles with so many pests. Oh, there's a little zucchini down there. If you can see that right behind that flower and that huge bee. <laughs> um, and then just for some nice beauty in the garden. But across the way here, we have some cucumbers like there's some Armenian cucumbers and market more cucumbers and they're looking pretty sickly and it's just because of the heat we have harvested a bunch of cucumbers off of these plants and I even had some plants over on that archway which I ripped up because they were just really sickly um, but they they were the first thing to start producing and they just pumped out cucumbers enough to make plenty of pickles and have for snacking and that has been very fun. I don't think I will grow zucchini on a trellis like this next time. It's just not as much of a climber as I thought or at least this Black Beauty variety isn't and I really wanted the trellises to have climbing things cucumbers did really good on them though um over here I tested out some garlic over there and have only gotten a few sprouts to come up so it's really just looking kind of weedy over there um over here we had a lot of onions and a lot of the stuff I started from seed and plant starts the cucumber was a mixture some from seed some from plant start and the zucchini was all from seed and the onions I ordered those online the garlic I started just from garlic 
um, the onions I ordered online and got like sets and it was actually really affordable. I think I need to fertilize them more. We pretty much dug up the soil, made the garden and put compost, um, like cow compost and mushroom compost. And then we just kind of mixed it all together and put hay down for mulching. And that seemed to fertilize everything pretty well along with putting some stuff that attracts bees and such. And pretty much everything flowers. So, I mean, that's been helpful for attracting bees, of course. There's a bunch out here. <laughs> um, I have been struggling a little bit with all of the bugs, but I am learning and adjusting. So, if you guys hear my dog, she's a howler. Don't mind her. Um, so, we have lots of onions here which this area we already harvested this they're still growing as they start to lay down that's when you know they're ready to harvest you can also dig a little bit and see like if it's starting to bulb lighting's not the best there there you go and then hey come on out come here My other dog came in here. I don't know if I trust him in here quite yet. Uh, we will see how he does. But you can check your onions to see if they're bulbing, which is just getting bigger around the area. They're getting bigger. Um, then we had over here potatoes, which we already harvested. Those took a while, just like the onions. I want to say they took around six months. Uh, but we had this whole patch and got a good amount. Over here, we're growing Kajari melons. Excuse my awkward looking shadow. <laughs> so we're growing these on a trellis and you can see the fruit here. See them down there? So I'm really excited. Um, these are tinier melons, so they should do really good on a trellis. And so far, there's a little bit of sickly looking areas like the cucumbers have um i think it's just because of the humidity here and they get like blight kind of like a fungal disease uh just like the cucumbers um potatoes got blight so we did ha harvest those a little early the onions have been doing great like i said i just think i need to fertilize them the cucumbers did great just until they get sickly And then over here, we have pole beans. You can see these are beautiful. They have that stripy, purp stripy purple with them. Um, then going over here, I started some more cucumbers and one here failed. We had cabbages here beforehand. I've harvested most of them. We still have a couple that have been needed to be harvested. Um, and if you see white powder around, we practice organic gardening and that is just diatomaceous earth, which is a non-toxic pesticide essentially. Uh, you can use it for many things, but it's really good for getting rid of bugs. And we have been dealing with stink bugs, um, a lot and so that's why I'm primarily using that for um, the ladybugs we've had a lot of those those are mixed emotions because on one hand they eat aphids but on the other hand they eat your leaves too I'll take it because aphids are intense but anyways we get here there's another cucumber I have that I just started from seed um, and most of this stuff has been hey stop that come here See, this is why I didn't trust my dog in here. He's trying to eat food. Come here. Come on. Out. Out. So, yeah, I don't like to have um, the dogs in the garden because they tend to try to eat stuff. But 
yeah, most of the stuff has been direct sow from seed or from plant start. Um, some stuff I did start under, like the carport, so they had shade, but still sun, but not, not as intense heat and such. Um, back there I had some lettuce, but we already harvested it, and I'm just letting it go to seed because I want to harvest the seeds. These are collard greens, which I found out I like more than mustard greens. Um, over here we had some calendula, which I harvested some flowers from it, and then both the plants, there were a few here, they just got really sickly, and I don't really know what happened. I think I needed to be cutting the flowers off more consistently, kind of like how you have to do with herbs, which we have some basil over there, and pretty much as it starts to flower, you just want to pick it off, which here, that's the flowering right there. You can see that. Here, I'll get closer. So it's easier to understand. So that, that's what it looks like when it starts to flower. And so you just want to pick below there, like right there, and use it, dry it, whatever. Um, I'll show you guys some methods of that later on, but right now I just want to go through and do a tour and get some information. Um, so we have the collard greens all there, and they've been doing great. They haven't had much pest pressure, um, a little bit of aphid pressure, um, but later on in the garden. Ah, I love the smell of basil. Um, yeah, the calendula, I think that it struggled because of the humidity, and I needed to cut the flowers quicker and be pruning it more. So we'll test that out and see. And I think it's just too hot now, so I'll do that a little later. Um, the basil has done great. Collard greens have done great. Cabbages actually did really good. I was a little worried about pest pressure, and there's not much. You can see a little bit of chewing, but not much. Oh, and if you see the black uh, liner underneath there, that's just some weed fabric that we put underneath the hay because we found out we really needed to do that. Um, and as you see, there's still plenty of weeds that come up and you just kind of pick them as they go up. Um, over here we have some artichoke plants growing, which I'm not sure how long these take. They have been up for a while. I want to say they've been here like six months. Um, kind of had a slow start growing and then they started taking off. That one's still a little stunted over there, I guess. This one has been doing great. So we'll see when they actually start producing. So far, they've managed throughout the summer fine. Over here, we have eggplants. And they haven't had too much pest pressure. A little bit of caterpillar, a little bit of stink bugs. Um, but more so later on in the season. And you can see there's an eggplant there. Right there. And there were a lot on here. I actually harvested a lot. They were, these are uh, Black Beauty eggplants, and they were actually a lot, I don't, they were a lot smaller than what I'm used to seeing. So I think I just needed to fertilize these, like actually get a, and I, and I did recently, actually, because I was like, oh man, let's see if we can get more. But some started to go bad, so I had to get those off. So I've heard when they're shiny is when they're ready. And see, they're starting to get a little dull there, so I'm gonna probably just end up composting that. But we did have a new flower. Where's that? Right there. And it's turning into a fruit. So that is awesome. So the fertilizer is working. Um, over here, we have tomatoes. We have a few different varieties. Um, lots of green tomatoes on there. We have been harvesting lots of tomatoes now. Also, oh, there's a spider web. Um, spiders are friends. So, lots of tomatoes here. And some are starting to blush. You can see right there and there. They're starting to get their color, so they'll be ready soon. Um, and just lots of green tomatoes. So that's awesome. I think there's only one or two varieties I've struggled with. Um, this first variety here is 
a beef steak. Yeah, and I got that from Plant Start. That's the beef steak tomato. And they're pretty good sized, um, majority of them. Uh, I have been pruning them really heavily at the bottoms, and I need to come out and do more just so that they don't get blight, which I have been combating that because each of them showed signs, and I just have to keep on pruning them often. Um, over next to it, this is the Glacier Early Variety, and this was actually the first to produce. Sorry, I was pausing because that was kind of loud. Um, so this was actually the first tomato plant to produce tomatoes. Um, and they've been coming out pretty well so far too. Uh, keeping up. They're a pretty normal sized tomato too. Um, I thought that both of these would be a little bigger. Some of them have been bigger. But really the mortgage lifter has had some of the biggest ones. And I'll get closer and show you guys that. So this is one of the mortgage lifter tomatoes and it's a pretty good size um, and then we had another tomato plant here which I can't remember what it was and it did not make it so I need to try and figure that out oh wow can you see that spider web I'm gonna try and leave it because spiders are friends. Um, and this one, man, I really wish I could remember. I'm not remembering, but that is a pretty good sized tomato right there starting to blush. So I'll probably come out and harvest that at the end of the day because that's when the sugars are higher and they taste better. Um, and we have this up against a still welded wire fence and we're just training them up it since these are tall growing varieties. Um, right there, you can see there's like caterpillar poop right there. And it might be hornworm poop though. So, wow, that cicada is loud. Um, so yeah, it might be hornworms, which those are intense. It will eat up your whole plant in a day. Uh, so we'll take a UV flashlight out at night and they glow. Um, I haven't been able to see any on here yet besides when I found them and just picked them off the plant during the day one morning. It was actually over on this plant here, which I used little labels. I actually cut up water jugs and wrote with Sharpie on them and the labels are starting to fade. So I'll have to find a different method you can see that's what that is there um and then these little tiny tomato starts i just did recently they're black crim tomato plants they uh have like a purpley tomato which i really wanted to see but they're struggling i don't know this is my second time trying to get them to come up and they're there but we'll see um we'll get down there but right here we have some dill which it's been going to seed and I've harvested all the dill that I need so I'm kind of just letting it flower and become a pollinator for the garden over here in this first row is cabbage which it was like a curly head cabbage and it didn't really create any head though and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be just harvested by these leaves which you can't eat the leaves of the cabbage just like this and we will but I thought it would produce also some like sort of curly head similar somewhat to like the head of that savoy cabbage um which I really like the savoy cabbage for making sauerkraut but this has not so I'm not sure if this is all that it does and I've tried to look at pictures I'm struggling finding it so if any of you watch this and know please let me know in the comments um, over there, broccoli was back there, but it went to seed, and that I'm saving to, well, really all that I'm trying to save for the seeds, but that's it, going to seed there, and I pruned off all the leaves underneath because we were struggling just recently with some aphids, 
and we found them on the underneath areas and it looks like they're all pretty gone now we used um some insecticidal soap and that seemed to have done the trick pretty well but they were like little tiny dot eggs underneath that's not that's just water there so it looks like we handled it pretty well um in the back row we used to have a bunch of carrots but now i'm growing some butternut squash over there so that's exciting and that's what i'm doing an experiment with because i i'll get over there and show you guys i wrapped the bottom where the main stem comes out because that's what you want to make sure is saved with um athletic tape because it will it sticks to the plant it's easy to put on but it's also good enough to it's like flexible enough to grow with the plant but it's supposed to prevent the vine borers from being able to eat in there so we'll see if that works so far that plant is doing great and i'm letting it kind of climb up too um so this is yeah all the dill oh i want to show you guys so i have these i did not prune these tomato plants heavily enough early on and so there's just a lot of offshoots and like some low hanging fruit and I got I came in and did it later that's why there's not as many leaves down there but see that tomato down there you know it just as it ripens pests can get to it quicker and um blight gets to it quicker so a lot of our oh, almost slipped there a lot of our oh you can even see there's the caterpillar right there but a lot of our fruit that's been at the lower end has been kind of sickly from either pests or fungal blight so we haven't been able to keep a lot of those but we were to the point to where I've pruned well enough and it's been a little time and I've been able to get good harvest from the middle and up um let's see here so I don't see them now ah oh, there's one there's been a bunch of these swallowtail I believe caterpillars are what they are see it there and they like to lay their eggs on here. So I've been having to watch that when I bring dill in to dry. And there's just a bunch of them on here. There's another one right there. I counted like five on here yesterday. I won't bore you with going through all of them, but it's kind of cool to see. And I'm leaving them just because I've already gotten all that I need from, whew, something came right at me. <laughs> I already got all that I needed from my dill and so I'm just letting it be a pollinator for attracting bees as much as I don't care for them. Um, this is Brussels sprout, both of these are, and it's kind of struggling. Um, it got attacked by aphids, so I think that's been its biggest issue and maybe also that the heat came in really quick and so the heat just kind of took over with them and they have they're more of a brassica family plant so I, I'm gonna try them again in the cooler time and see if we get more but it's kind of cool they're, the Brussels sprouts will grow in the little shoulder or armpits there you can't really see them because they're just starting so we'll see if we get anything from that um, further back there we have some sun gold tomatoes there we go, which these have been some of my favorite snacking tomatoes, and it's been pumping out a bunch of them. Kind of hard to keep up with now. Um, over here we have a lipstick bell pepper, which has been fun and yummy. And then I got a red bell pepper from a plant start. And some of them I got from farm stores, some just from like tractor supplier Lowe's. This one I got from Lowe's, and it's the main brand that we all hear of and it's actually not taking off too well I'm not sure if it's something i did or if it's just the plant so we'll see more in the future this is a habanero pepper plant which see all those habaneros growing under there all right there there's a bunch of them and they're supposed to turn orange when they're ready so that'll be fun because we like spicy stuff over here i have a beautiful zinnia patch um, at first these were kind of slow starting and then they just took off. It was great. 
um, gonna go around some hay in the way here. So over here, you can see right down there, the blue, right in there, I'll zoom in, the blue athletic tape that I wrapped around there. I just dug at the main stub and I dug, dug a little bit down and then um, wrapped it till I saw a root and then I wrapped it around it. And there's lots of fruit on this, which is awesome. And there's also some eggs right there. I don't know what eggs they are. If you know, let me know. Because it's probably like squash bugs, which are bad, or vine borers. I don't know, because I found out recently that vine borers lay their eggs. They usually do it on the stem, I thought. So probably a squash bug. I'll come out and get that later on. Um, I already showed you guys most stuff over here. These were microgreens that I just went let go to seed because I didn't harvest them early enough and there's stuff I can still harvest underneath in the ground like radishes from them but I'm just kind of letting them be a distraction for bugs to eat up so they leave the rest of my garden alone um this was a bok choy cabbage that I let go to seed a lot of my bok choy did not do well in the springtime but did great in the fall winter garden um ooh, right there See that crazy looking bug? Um, I think that is an assassin bug, which I need to look it up again. Let me know if you know. Um, <clears throat> and I've heard they're good in the garden actually, so they're supposed to eat other bugs. Um, over here, back on the other side, we have some jalapeno pepper plants. And there's been lots of fruit on this. I just harvested, but there's one of them you can kind of see that i've harvested a lot on this because i'm actually about to make some salsa this plant has been doing great that's some nasturtium plants here which are dying off you can see one of the flowers about to come out there and the nasturtiums are actually an edible flower they're kind of slightly spicy i really like them they're really pretty but they have been struggling a little bit um in this heat so I needed to definitely um, harvest the flowers quicker. Um, back here, <laughs> we're kind of doing an experiment around here because we're growing watermelons, and yes, they're huge. They're um, summer, like on the still welded wire fence, and I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'm kind of tying them up when they get big, so we'll see if it works or not. And then I'm letting them kind of just crawl all in this area so they have like a patch area so we actually get some we actually did harvest one so far and it was really good but there's some really big ones you can't really see it you see a little bit of it but that's one under there um there's also a really big one growing right here in that bag that i have tied up um and i'll also show you guys i'm growing some sugar baby watermelons down there they're so beautiful that like gray dusty color so I'm excited for those and their stem is supposed to just kind of die off when they're ready so we'll see when those are ready um, over here it's kind of like the kids garden area I grew some more zinnias if you guys know please tell me are these Cosmos because they're in a line like it looks like I planted them right with the line of the zinnias and I know I planted a different flower oh my loud cicada <laughs> um, I know I planted some Cosmos and they kind of look like the foliage I've looked up but at the same time they also kind of look like a couple weeds <laughs> so I'm like is this a weed taking over or Cosmos I don't know they haven't shown any flowers yet um, here we have a little strawberry area. I want to have, oh wow, there's mosquitoes out during the daytime. Lovely. I want to have lots more strawberries. They crawl and grow more, so I need to figure out a way to give them more area over here. Um, but there's some fruit there. It's been hard. As soon as they turn red, the bugs seem to get them. So we'll have to 
be more intense with like the natural stuff like the insecticidal soap and the diatomaceous earth. Um, here is a pineapple sage plant which has been really yummy. Um, it's a fun little twist on sage. And this <laughs> is another experiment. This is a giant cherry tomato plant. And my sugar snap peas failed on this um, teepee that I have here. So I'm kind of just letting, you can see I use bamboo sticks to make a teepee. And I'm kind of just letting the cherry tomato plant take over. But then the grass is kind of taking over too and it's really intense and I just pruned this whole plant back to where it was manageable to get stuff easily and snack like two weeks ago and it's already huge again so probably won't do this again but there's been lots of fruit you can kind of see it's hard to find them because the plant's so big so there's a bunch of red in there and over here we have blueberries which we got them about a couple years and there's and we planted them and I just fertilized them because I wasn't really fertilizing them. So I think that's something I needed to keep up with. And this is just their first year being in the ground. So I think they just have to get more established. But hopefully we get more. Um, we also have some grapes. Which I'll walk over there. And show you guys. We have not full on made garden doors yet, so I just kind of use like sticks and stuff to keep them closed so the dogs don't get in. Um, let's see here. So we have some great plants growing, and we're growing them up some wood posts. And it's kind of cool. Those are some huge elephant ears here these are really fun and a volunteer squash plant over here so it just blew in the wind our animal transferred it and there's butternut squash growing over here also so that's fun and i'm not doing anything to this i'm just seeing how it does on its own it's biting the grass i'm trying to see just kind of experiment what wins out um then over here we did a row of um, sunflowers and only some of them have popped up. Those are still really tiny and I'm bummed because some of them are supposed to be this really dark, beautiful variety, but some are beautifully blossoming. That one's just starting to open, isn't that cool? And then that one's open. I'm going to show you guys over here, this one that's open. Look at that. All the bees on it. <gasps> but it's really pretty. It's a little terrifying, but it's really pretty. Beautiful. Spider web. There's another view of the garden. To orchard area have a uh, this is a apple tree actually let's see here yeah this is the apple tree here and then we have a couple of those we got them on clearance we have a peach tree we have a couple of each and then we also have pear tree so that is all the stuff we have um, this awesome pear tree we actually it's doing really well and we fertilized this um, you know it's a little odd sounding but with um, the placenta um, from last baby birth all that and We've heard it's a really good fertilizer and they usually just throw those out. Um, we had a home birth and so we just kept that, froze it, and put it under that pear tree. So this is the garden and hopefully there's some helpful information 
for everyone. Alright guys, well, thanks. Have a good week.